Welcome back to Donuts in Space and part 7 of the HMS Kent build. We made some pretty good progress on this uh, wee beastie of mine and uh, we're at the point now where we can start pouring the resin for the seascape. Um, so we got most of the parts on the deck uh, or, or around the ship to be fair. The only thing that's left to do uh, is is mainly just all of the uh, the photo etch, which will be done once the seascape's all in and the ship stabilised. <clears throat> the only things that I've really got left to put on are the uh, missile launchers on the side or at the front here. Just need to get those painted and put on. Uh, the guns being worked on, and that's about it really. There's just a couple of other little bits like the uh, radar domes etc. that need to go on. But those will be done uh, once uh, the, the seascape's dried. I just wanted to ensure that this ship was actually in the seascape and settled down. And I've basically used the Woodland Scenics water effects to um, try and prevent any leaks from happening. Um, what I've done this time as well from uh, basically learning my lesson on the, um, the uh, HMS Daring is I basically put a glob of the uh, water effects in that hole with the wires so as I pulled it, as, as the wires came through slightly uh, it would have pulled that down and, and blocked it off um, when this dries um, I'll also put another little blob of it from the other side to prevent it from coming through <laughs> what I've also done differently on this one is whereas before on the daring we had the um, resin was able to get under the the lip of the frame and it was quite a deep, I didn't realise how deep it actually was and I think that's basically one of the things that took up quite a lot of more resin on that build as well was the fact that you had that uh, little bit going underneath the frame so I wasn't quite prepared for that to be fair <coughs> so on this one again with the water effect I've just completely blocked that off. I'm sure I could have most probably used something else that wouldn't have been quite as expensive to use. But as I say, that bottle's quite old, so it doesn't really matter, to be fair. Because I'm sure one day that will go off. So it's best that I use the stuff uh, before it goes off than um, waste it. So I basically went around the whole of the outside and filled that in and just let that dry off to the point where the skin got hard. Uh, and then... Once I was satisfied that you know it, it was okay and there was going to be no leaks, I just then went around again with the uh, acrylic paint and then painted all of that to help blend it all in. So this one uh, should hopefully not come up to the top of uh, the seascape uh, as it did with the uh, HMS there and hopefully there's just still going to be a little bit of a dip left, I'm not quite sure yet. Hopefully that will be the case. If not, it doesn't really matter, to be fair. I'm not really that fussed by that, to be fair. So all I need to do now is just basically let all of this dry up. Uh, and then as soon as that's dry, or well, as soon as I've got a nice skin on the outside of it, should I say, uh, which shouldn't take that long, to be fair. Uh, I think last time it took about five, six hours for it to get a hard skin on it. Um, and then once we've got that skin, I can then pour the resin on it and then wait for that to dry for three million years as it did on the other one. Although whether it does on this one or not, I don't know because it's a smaller area. The surface area is a lot smaller. Um, so I don't know. I'm not really too sure. So it might take because the surface area is smaller, or even though it's going to be a shallower pour, um, it might still take a bit more time to, to set up. I don't know what it is about that resin. But as I say, on the on the day, it took sort of three days for that to actually set up. So we just have to see uh, how we go on that one. What I've also done as well at the back end here, because I had to cut out a little hole at the uh, at the bottom of the hole there to to, to actually bring the wires through from the uh, the little room that's at the uh, the at the um, the stern there um, to drag the wire through to be able to get them through to the main area where I was doing the wiring rather than actually splodging a load of the um, 
water effects underneath there this section is quite high off the ground so what I basically ended up doing was uh, just sanding the area down around the the hull and then add in uh, a small strip of styrene to that hull uh, and then basically making sure that it's got a really good firm lock on it by just adding a little bit of uh, tape on there to keep the tension on it whilst it's drying so hopefully that will be dry by the time that this has formed a really really nice skin on it so I can just then take off the masking tape and then I'll be able to do the pour without any of the resin getting into the hole through there so yeah that's uh, that's what she's looking like at the moment not much more left to go on this really once this is in it's just a case of doing the photo etch most of the photo etch for this has now uh, been painted I prefer to paint it whilst it's actually on um, the PE sheet itself I just find it a lot easier to to deal with it whilst it's there so I just basically went over this with a couple of coats of the uh, Tamiya surface primer I'd actually run out of the grey stuff so I just used the white primer it's exactly the same stuff just a different colour that's all all of the railings and all of the other bits and pieces have been painted uh, in the light ghost grey and then the radar bits that need to be painted in black are obviously um, painted in black so yeah getting ready for that and then there's just a few more pieces um, left on the sprues to do the only problem that I have had is uh, on this kit and I find this really weird the parts that are up on here there's one there and then there's also one on the other side as well um, I think they're the I think it's J17 those ones are but it's asking you to put them there as well but they only supply you with two parts for J17 so I don't know what is going on there to be honest I just find that a little bit weird that you know you put J17 there and there but then it's asking you to put a J7 or two J17s uh, in this gap and there aren't four J17s there's only two uh, which is a bit bizarre so I'm just going to have to see I've, I've, I've basically kind of made my mind up that um, yes I've still got some sprue left over so what I'll do is um, I'll just work on those bits and pieces and uh, get those on once the uh, resin's dry and then I'll just see what we've got left over to see if that there is anything that we can put in there because I've looked all over this um, all over the sprues and, and, and there's just not the parts that need to go in that little bit there which I find a bit weird and one of the other things that I've noticed with this kit which is uh, which to be honest I wish they wouldn't do but they ask you to actually put pieces together but then you need to put them to one side because you won't then be using them until sort of two pages down the road so why they couldn't have actually asked you to make those parts on that page before you put them onto wherever they need to go I don't know I can't see the point in telling you to build it and then you not having to use it for, for several pages after that it just seems a bit odd and a bit weird uh, but there you go I think that's one of the biggest problems with this kit fit issue is great um, it's just the instructions are uh, severely lacking um, and the point of fact that they're asking you to actually put two small pieces together that you know they could have actually made as one to be fair uh, but there you go anyway I will come back to you as soon as that resin's pulled so we can uh, take a little look at it and then obviously it's gonna I'm not gonna be able to do anything to it for the next uh, three days after that so I'll be back to you uh, in a minute to show you the resin pull